In last week's video, we had the very exciting opportunity to look at not one, but two new Paganis. Uh, we got the Zonda F from Mini GT and the Zonda Sync from Tarmac Works Global 64. And now this week, we get another Pagani Zonda. This time it's an HP Barchetta from LCD Models. And this is going to be an opportunity for us to not only take a look at this new model, but also to compare and see what you get uh, from in comparison between a premium model and a super premium model. This thing looks absolutely amazing. So let's get it out of the package and take a look at it. So LCD model is, you know, it's a Chinese brand as far as I know. Uh, it's, they don't have a whole lot of different castings at this stage. Um, so this comes with a little card in Chinese with quality control pass. So manufactured by Dong Guan. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to read that. <laughs> I'm just going to embarrass myself. Um, so they don't have a whole lot of castings uh, so far. I've picked up a McLaren. Uh, I think it was a McLaren 600 from them, which was pretty nice. Uh, but this one looks to be on an entirely different level uh, from, from even that McLaren. So here we go. So the color wasn't my first choice. Uh, I would have preferred something other than pink. Uh, but I, I snoozed on these too long. Um, and pink was the only thing that was available at the point when I finally pulled the trigger. But this thing is just amazing. These wheels, they're different on, on the, each side, aren't they? Yeah, wow, look at that. Blue and silver on one side. Gold and silver on the other. Just amazing. Carbon fiber detail on the rear wing. Seat detail. Kind of a blue and gray silver steering wheel fantastic detail on the dashboard let's see if we can zoom in there a little bit and get a better look at that that is for 164 scale model it's pretty impressive um, obviously the gauges and stuff are probably just a decal but some beautiful detail on the inside of the door door handle there over here we can see the little blue door handle that speaker vents on the dashboard very reflective surfaces on the mirrors these are very fixed mirrors so this is this is going to be a fairly fragile model um, but it is this is fantastic so it is metal body plastic base rubber tires the wheels do spin this might actually roll let's give it a shot and see it does. It actually, I mean, it's not going to be a great roller, but it does roll. That's fantastic. And just the, you know, awesome rear detail. And so we can compare this to, say, the Mini GT. This is obviously not a Zonda. This is a, a Wyra, um, but it's convertible. So you can see the, you know, the different level of details. Mini GT is fantastic for, you know, for the price point that they, that they're at, you know, this is a, probably a $12 model versus this, which I think is closer to $30 probably. Um, and, uh, you know, but the interior is really where there's a, where there's a big, well, actually there's, there's quite a few areas where there's differences on these, but, you know, mini GT does do a great job, but man, this thing is awesome. Very, very happy to finally have this love the wheel that that is so cool blue on one side and that just amazing detail carbon fiber piece covering the wheel wheel cover awesome very very cool all right so that's a that was a great model to start with and uh, kind of kind of regret not ordering that sooner so that I could have got it in a different color. But the pink is still, I mean, the pink is still cool. Sorry for the box situation here. I have to try to keep things organized, otherwise I lose track. All right, uh, so next, 
another brand that I've been really impressed with. Um, the the first car that I got from this brand was this beautiful Audi R8 convertible, and it was I did, I was kind of blown away with just how good a job they did on this. It's another case of you can see the interiors, just uh, just very well done for a 164 scale model. Um, so I decided uh, I would have to pick up a few a few more of these. Um, so this is another brand. They don't have a whole lot of of models. So this is Kang Fi. Uh, I think they only have maybe five five six different castings. Um, not a lot of information about them, and mostly a well, just mostly kind of warnings. But. Uh, Let's get this thing out and take a look at it. So this one comes with the with the roof roof rack accessory, which is even just this is actually pretty pretty nicely done, um, which is very cool. And and it's not even screwed in, so that's actually kind of interesting. And yeah, so. Beautiful. You have front wheels that turn. That's pretty cool. And this has has a feature that's going to be pretty interesting, I think. Uh, we'll take a look at that in a minute. Fantastic front end here. Those uh, lights all look really good. Snorkel. Come on, focus. Nice roof rack. Beautiful, beautiful. But I believe that this has f actual suspension. Like if you can look in there, there are actually springs for the suspension on this. So that, you know, most most die cast it at 164 scale will not. I mean, this is the first time I have ever seen actual springs in the suspension for something and pivoting front wheels. I mean, I have seen this on other models, but... Uh, but not the spring suspension. So very, very cool. Yeah, this this brand is very impressive. I definitely will be uh, be picking up everything that they put out because these these are just incredible. Absolutely incredible. Wish my camera would focus. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. That's two two major hits there for sure. So I do have uh, um, waiting in the wings for a future video. It won't be in this video, but I also have a Audi RS7 from Kang Fi that we'll, we will take a look at um, eventually should be pretty cool as well all right sorry next a little bit of a change of pace a little step down um, but still a pretty cool model uh, this is the uh, from matchbox collector series the 1963 honda t360 uh, pickup truck and uh, so this series is um, this is for this collector series it's like they really stepped up their game Except for they made one big mistake with this. So all of these models are pretty cool. Except for the cases of these come with one of each of these models. Or I think maybe there's two of these. So one of each of these, which are going to be the most desirable models, including a Pagani, which I, of course I'm dying to find. Um, but I think there's two of these and three of these Jaguars. I mean, and the, and the Jag is cool. I found this one first. It's... Um, you know, it's 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 a nice model, but three of them in the case is is too many when when there's so many other desirable models. Um, so you'll find that Jag easily, and you'll probably find this pickup truck fairly easily. But those other models are going to be nearly impossible. So you get your collector's box, which is kind of cool, and the camera is. Just not focusing today. You have your opening hood with the spare tire. And 
rubber tires. These look actually look like Hot Wheels real real riders. And yeah, just this neat little pickup truck. I didn't I didn't have very high expectations for this, um, but I think it's actually pretty cool. And the moving part on it is actually pretty well done. So the headlights show through. You flip it up, and uh, it closes fairly well. Easy to open. But yeah, that's actually pretty neat. I like that. Uh, quite a bit better than I would have expected. All right. Why is autofocus not working? All right. Next, from Auto World, a square body pickup. <laughs> Imagine that. Uh, this is the 1985 Chevy Silverado 10 fleet side. This is from uh, Premium Release 5. This is version A of the truck. So they're, they've been, through each case, they have been doing a different year of this truck. So they're now up to 1985. And this is in dark blue poly and white. I do really like these versions. I love the two-tone versions of the trucks particularly. Um, this one looks like it's maybe a little bent. The bed doesn't seem to be sitting right. Which is it's a little unusual, especially for this casting. I have not had any major issues with it. So obviously for the, for the 1985 uh, model, you're going to get a different grill. Uh, that's the I think the biggest difference between all of these the, there's quite a few different grills on the on the trucks um, So if we can just grab another one so you can see how same casting I mean completely different finish, but uh, the grill is completely different as well So each year they have done the the appropriate grill for the year and uh, This one looks looks pretty cool Um I, I, you know, I'm not the, I'm not an expert on these trucks. Like I couldn't tell you like, you know, what's going to be the last year that they're going to do with these. I don't know how far these trucks ran, you know, they're manufactured up to, I don't know what year, 1990 or something. I don't, don't know. Um, but Auto World's going to do them all. They put out one of these trucks in every case, some variation of it. They're cool. Next, uh, we have a Studebaker 2R truck, 1951. And this is uh, this came to me as a gift from uh, Rick at Whole Lotta Zepp. Um, I think he's actually changed the, the name of his channel to Whole Lotta Zepp Diecast now. Um, but he, uh, he sent me a couple of these Studebakers. So this one looks very, very cool. And then we'll have another one later in the, in the video to take a look at as well. I collect Studebakers, so I was very happy to to, uh, to get these. They're both versions that I have, not only do I not have, I have never even seen before, so that is very awesome. So thank you, Rick, for that. And this is going to be one of these M2s where it's always a little bit of an adventure because you have moving parts and they are not always the best with their moving parts but let's see it's looks like yeah it looks like this door is a little little wonky but the hood seems to be working okay and pretty detailed engine in there that's pretty nice. This is cool. It's kind of a hot rod version of the truck. So this is the uh, 1951 version. So the only other version of this truck I have is this one. And this is, the license plate is 1954. So there's a very significant difference in the grill again. Um, and that hood ornament, I don't know if that's a, a element of the hot rodded truck or they had something that they added or removed, I guess removed. Although this is this is a higher like a, from in the M2 line, this is a higher end model. Um, so it has opening hood and opening doors, whereas this one doesn't. 
uh, doesn't have either. So, but very cool. Yeah, it's a very nice bought model. You have the thin front tires and really big rear tires. So this is a, it's more of a drag, drag version of the truck than anything. Yeah, this one doesn't have that. That's pretty cool. I'm really gaining an appreciation of M2. It was a brand that I, I, I really got off to a rough start with it um, because because of quality issues. Just the first several models that I purchased from them all had some kind of issue. And it uh, it really turned me off to the brand at first. But, uh, you know, the last year or so, I think either they've improved their quality or my luck has gotten better because I have, I have not had any major... Uh, quality issues with M2, uh, like I, like I did at first. And, uh, they've been much better than, um, certain other American diecast brands that we will talk about later. All right. Next from mini GT. And my camera is not cooperating today at all. Um, we have, a the four GT LM. So this is the number 66 car. So these, these ran at 2016, 24 hours of Le Mans. Um, in a previous video, we had looked at the number 68 car. And uh, so I had gone ahead and grabbed one of the, the, uh, the others. So there's four cars that Mini GT has put out. The uh, number uh, 66, 65, 66, 67, and 68. And, um, you know, at the... At the 24 Hours of Le Mans that year, it was the number 68 car that won the race, and uh, so these are these are all from from Chip Chip Ganassi Racing, and the difference is that the number uh, 65 and number 66 cars are from Team UK, and the number 67 and 68 car are from uh, Team USA. So the one's based out of the UK. And then the others are based in the U.S. So one, two, or the the first two cars ran in in uh, the WEC, and then the other two ran in the U.S. in IMSA in the GTLM ca category. So I was curious to see, you know, just how much of a difference there is between these liveries because in the pictures they all look exactly the same. So here's the number sixty-eight. And I had figured it was probably just going to be the number and then the color um, across here on the roof that, that distinguishes the car. And it does appear that that's going to be the case. So looks like all of the other sponsor logos and everything are the same. And yeah, it really is just that, those two little details, just the the color on the, the roof and the number. But this is such an awesome model. They did, Mini GT just did a fantastic job on this. And it's such a cool car. It's a, it's a real shame that they stopped racing these um, because they're definitely missed. Um, so hopefully, or I would love to see them come back, but who knows? I think Ford is probably more interested in some kind of e-racing at this point. You know, electron or uh, electric car racing or something. I don't know if they've done that, but given the way they're retooling their product line, I suspect that's probably what they're going to be more interested in. All right, ah, we have some Hot Wheels, and this one uh, we have the '94 Bugatti EB110 in yellow. And the first version of this was in blue, a color that has a lot of different meaning now. But we're going to take a look at this real quick. Looks pretty good with the black wheels. Get full detail. And this uh, probably from the window piece, I'm going to guess, or maybe the interior. The interior is red on this one black on this one otherwise they're the same I like the black wheels better but very cool we'll add 
have them back here. And then the Mercedes 500E in red. Um, so the prior versions of this we've seen in silver and in black uh, last year. And now we get a recolor in red. This is such a cool casting. So it's going to be full, full deco all the way around. And we've got Hot Wheels on the license plate, Mercedes badge. It's cool. It's always cool to get another color of something like this. And I'm glad to see that they're just doing, you know, pretty much stock liveries. They're not, not doing anything uh, fancy or wacky with this stuff. And then next we have the Nissan R390 GT1. And we have seen this in a few colors now as well. So we had blue one. Oh, my camera is will not focus. And red one. And now in white. With gray wheels. I like it with these wheels. So you, these are different than the, the wheels that came on the prior releases. But it's going to be the same. Same detail otherwise. So again, um, not the not the best Tampa work on this white one, but uh, it's a pretty cool car. You know, it's it's one of these race cars for the road kind of thing, which is a uh, which is always an interesting interesting thing to see. And uh, yeah, I definitely like this better with these with these uh, lace wheels. And gray it's very cool and then we have a recolor of the Nissan Leaf Nismo RCO2 it's kind of a <laughs> interesting car I don't really know much about it but we had seen it previously in silver and black and I don't think there was another color or maybe there was and I missed it um, Maybe there was there a white one, maybe? Because this livery is different. So this isn't a straight recolor. It is. It does have a different uh, different set of tampos on it. Similar, but definitely not the same. I don't know. I think it's a pretty cool car. You lost the uh, headlights on the new one. That's unfortunate. And the grill to get this on the hood. Yeah, that's too bad. Yeah, I like that better just because it has more complete tampo work on it. All right, one more Hot Wheels. Uh, the 67 Ford GT40 Mark IV in Golf livery. Everybody loves Golf livery. That's actually not my favorite livery for sure. I'm kind of tired of seeing it in a lot of ways. It's been put out too many times, but that's just my opinion. It's cool casting. You get the lens or sort of lensed headlights from the window piece, and gold wheels, and then the nice racing livery. It's pretty cool. All right, what do we have next? Back to some super premium die cast. And this is a new to me brand, Street Weapon. I, I don't have any other models from this brand. Uh, it's another Chinese brand. And I don't really know much of anything about the brand <clears throat> other than that this car looks pretty cool. So we'll get it out and take a look at it. This is another one that's really, really detailed, which we could totally see if my camera would cooperate. Yeah. 
Again, you get the carbon fiber finish on the wing. Brake discs and the calipers in there in the wheels. These wheels are, are not, they do not move. Well, I guess the back ones kind of move. The front ones are not going to move, move at all. So no rolling for this model, um, which is sad. But the that looks, the grill looks really nice. Headlights look pretty good. Got some painted detail on the base even. I think it's actually a metal base. It is. That's surprising. Little bit of wonkiness in this tire but yeah another got reflected reflective surface in the in the mirrors again and let's see if we can zoom in a little on this interior so we've got some uh, extra parts on the seats for the harnesses and those are not just decals they're actually separate pieces that's pretty interesting Kind of a racing steering wheel. Not a whole lot of detail on the dash. I mean, there's some some nice molded detail. Look at that that giant <laughs> uh, brake. Is that the way they are on an MX-5? Are they that big? Although maybe this is like a kind of a drift car or something. Maybe you would have that so you can throw the the car off balance to do something. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about there. <laughs> this tire is going to bug me though. That doesn't look very good. But yeah, this is a this is a pretty cool model. Um, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So new to me brand. I don't I don't even know what other what other castings they have. I don't uh, I don't remember seeing anything else. But they may have. A handful of other things that they've put out or it may be just one of these brands that pops up puts out a model or two and then disappears but uh this is pretty cool and I'm, I'm gonna guess it was limited i guess i didn't, didn't even show this yeah limited to 691 of 999 so it's a pretty cool model wish it rolled uh then we have some more hot wheels um, so the, uh, two pack, this is the only one that I picked up. So there's three of these two packs that they've come out with. They have this one with these two Ford Mustang RTRs and they have the Skylines, the R32 and the R34, which this one's going to be almost impossible to find. And then this one, the Plymouth Superbird and the 70 Roadrunner. I did find this one, but I'm just not interested in it. These, these two packs are, they're. They're a little bit frustrating to me, especially this one. Um, but I had to have it because this one looks so awesome. This car just looks so cool. But the fact that this car, they just put it out. It was part of Slide Street. So, you know, it's conceivable that in the store you could find Slide Street hanging on the pegs. So you could find one of these and then you could find this two-pack at the same time. And that, that to me is, it's just annoying um, and seems wrong. The, when they first put these out, I I, I, I kind of liked that because it gave me an opportunity to pick up some castings that I had missed since I had, you know, just they were from several years ago. And since I've only been collecting for, you know, less than three years, I was, you know, happy to be able to pick up the, the older castings. But this one is, this is not even six months old yet. Uh, so reissuing it like this is just not good Hot Wheels. You're, you're abusing your collector community by doing that. But it's an awesome car. I, I do. I mean, I love the Slide Street when it came out. And uh, I had meant to grab that off the wall so we could compare it and see if there were any differences. I forgot to do that. So we'll just, uh, we're going to assume that there aren't any differences. I'm pretty sure there probably won't be. Um, but this one looks really good. I like the five spoke, white, white five spokes on here. And uh, it's a very cool looking livery. So I am happy to have this. I just wish it had been done some other way. Um, this, uh, yeah, anyway. 
This is a cool one. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. I just, it makes me sad to be a little bit disappointed in it just because we just got this. Why do you have to put it out again? Anyway, moving on. <clears throat> From Greenlight. We have a 1970 Dodge Challenger RT. Uh, this is known as the uh, Black Ghost. Apparently it's the reproduction of a very famous uh, uh, street racer. And this looks pretty cool. Nice gloss black with a flat um, matte black roof. This is a hobby exclusive release, so I'm hoping that for no major quality issues. That sits a little bit uneven. Looks like maybe the base is a little bit crooked on it. So my hope for no major quality issues may be, may be dashed. Let's see if we can make some room here and see if that's leaning. It's hard to tell. It's probably not too bad. But nice orange engine in there looks pretty cool these tires are too wide but that's a common problem on green lights that I don't really like the way that hood looks but it's a cool release good year on the tires that's pretty nice not bad Yeah. So yeah, Greenlight obviously has a lot of quality issues, um, but it does seem to me that their hobby exclusive releases uh, are less prone to quality issues than their standard, what what you would maybe consider their mainline releases, um, which is good because the hobby exclusives are a little bit more expensive. So from Auto World, this is a premium release five version A, the nineteen. 95 Toyota Supra in Baltic blue. So this is a very dark blue color. <clears throat> Chrome wheels. So it's a metallic blue, dark metallic blue. And one of the few Auto World castings that has uh, lensed headlights. Most of them do not. But we've seen this casting quite a few times. Um, this is the winged version. They have put out both the car with and without the wing. Um, so you have the you know, painted taillights and a uh, nice detailed base. Yeah, I don't know. It's a cool car. I, I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of done with this casting though. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I got it because I bought a case, and I, and I think I've decided to stop buying Auto World cases just because they're putting out too many of the same car that I, even though I like them, like I like this car. I, I you know, I'm, I, I really am, am a fan of the car, but I don't need so many subtle different, you know, different colors. I don't know. It's getting old. I, they have had so many other castings that they could put out. Um, they just don't. And they keep reissuing the same stuff. So this uh, this is another Studebaker, 1949 Studebaker 2R tow truck. This one is awesome. This was another gift from Rick at a whole lot of Zep die cast. Um, and uh, so this one is limited to 5,880 pieces. And this one is pretty cool looking as well so we, if we can get the box open we can remove this from the base and take a closer look at it it is very cool how much of a or how many or yeah how much of a variation there is between these different releases so you know, we've looked at three of these Studebaker trucks, and in reality, they're they're not anything alike. 
Um, so I'm saying that after, you know, just after complaining about uh, Auto World and their propensity for issuing the same casting over and over again. Technically, M2 does that as well, but you know, this uh, this has a lot more uh, variation to it than you know a, a change in the paint color on a Supra. So uh, let's see, where did the other one go? So this was. The black one, right? I mean, obviously, it's, there's a lot of differences here. Different model year. Um, obviously, the whole tow truck, the whole back end of the truck is completely different. Um, and uh, it's uh, the tow truck is is very very cool. So set that down. It's got this weird push thing on the front, which is a little crooked. It's not mounted very well, but you do have a nice engine in there. Pretty nice detail. Hood seems to close okay. It's like this one probably has opening doors, although they seem to be not. They're not going to want to cooperate on opening. But yeah, I'm definitely the more M2s I get, the more of an appreciation I I gain for <clears throat> for the brand. So here you've got pretty thin front wheels, but you've got dualies on the back, as you would expect for a for a tow truck. And the nice military logo or uh, livery on it, which is awesome. You actually have a uh, lensed taillights to go with the lensed headlights. So very cool. Yeah, love this. These are awesome. Thank you again, Rick. Right. Next, another green light from the Hot Pursuit series and a car that I was really looking forward to getting, the 1982 Ford Mustang SSP from the Arizona Department of Public Safety. So this is a uh, local uh, DPS car. Uh, it's old, or you know, it's an older livery. So the 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 current liveries that, that Arizona DPS uses, um, they now say State Trooper on on them, and they have this black and silver livery, which is really cool looking. Uh, I wish Greenlight would uh, would actually uh, do a release of that. Um, they mostly drive things like uh, Tahoes. Now I don't know that this hood's going to open. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Check out that engine in there. That's pretty cool. That's a little bit of a dirty windows, painted tail lights, and a wonky tire on there. I just noticed. Arizona plate. I'm sure this is easily fixed. Yep, just popped right back on. Yeah, I don't know. The painted headlights and stuff. Another wonky tire. <laughs> Grief. All right. Trivial to fix. That's okay. I'm not going to complain about that. Yeah, it's cool. I, li I like this casting. Um, obviously, you know, green light. When they're doing painted details like this, they they don't have the you know the level of of detail that you would get in some other models and even some other green light models but it's cool i'm very happy to have that it will join my police car collection ah uh, here we go something a little wacky <laughs> so I, I had picked up this maisto design thing it was supposed to be a case um and i didn't know what was going to be in it and so <laughs> we we're going to see these a few of these cars sprinkled through my videos as we look at some of these kind of weird Maisto castings, um, and this one is definitely uh, an interesting one. Um, 1968 Chevrolet Camaro, kind of a, a drag racing one, and the tires are falling off on this one too. All of them, it seems. <laughs> um, I don't know. This is wacky. This is actually it's kind of cool. You know, this is this is a fun casting. This is not going to be an accurate representation of anything, and it actually has an opening hood. I didn't expect that. 
um, authority on the license. Is that what that's? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's goofy. It's goofy. It's fun. I actually kind of like it. Unlike the one we looked at last week. This horrible thing. This thing is terrible. Um, <laughs> but this one's actually pretty cool for what it is. It's fun. All right. Something a little more serious. Mini GT. Pandem Toyota GR Supra in matte gray. Looking forward to checking this one out. I always like matte finishes. So we'll see how this one looks. Oh yeah, that's going to be pretty cool. Pretty cool. This uh, Supra was not my favorite car when I first got one of these. This this Pandem, this Mini GT Pandem Supra was the first version of the Supra. They have put out Liberty Walk versions. They've put out HKS versions and several variations on each of those. Um, but through time and buying various different versions of the car I have really gained an appreciation for it and I actually really like this one a lot this is very cool looking these tail lights look fantastic defroster lines on the window there metal base no information on it um, so obviously it's you know metal ba metal body metal base rubber tires all that kind of good stuff it should roll um, I have heard of a couple people getting Mini GTs that don't roll, which uh, which is that. It's really unfortunate. Um, but that's a manufacturing defect. It's not a characteristic of the brand. They will typically roll. I have never found one that does not roll, although I have gotten a couple that don't roll super well. Um, but this one rolls fine, and this is a very awesome version of this. That looks fantastic. Love it. All right, something completely different from Racing Champions Mint. 1958 Chevrolet Bel Air Impala and this is a hobby exclusive release from Racing Champion so it's limited to one of 2016 and uh, I don't know I just thought this this looked pretty cool I love cars of every era and I definitely enjoy collecting these older cars in order to to get to know them because I don't know very much about these cars I have uh, very little expertise on the giant American cars of the 50s. And this looks really cool. Nice, nice white walls. They actually did a pretty good job on that. All the white walls seem reasonably intact. Does this have an opening hood? Yes, it does. A little, uh, red and black engine in there probably not the most detailed engine in the world but that's okay no opening doors no opening trunk and this is this is a racing champions casting so racing champions is this weird brand of they have castings from a bunch of different companies um like you'll see i think you'll see even johnny lightning casting sometimes maybe even auto world they definitely have Ertl castings and then they have their own castings and some of them are really cool, and some of them are really terrible. <laughs> it's a very inconsistent brand. This one is definitely in the really cool category, though. This is an awesome car. I love it. What does it say on the license plate? Love and Life, Florida plate. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah, that one's a good one. I like that a lot. All right, and then from Greenlight, uh, Hot Pursuit. This is Series 39, the 1987 Chevrolet Caprice, uh, Ontario Police College skid training car. Which 
is kind of an interesting, uh, interesting choice of a vehicle to do. Um, I wasn't too sure about this one, but I, you know, I bought a case of these, so I ended up with it. It's pretty cool. I like the, I like that it has the blacked out wheels that, that gives it a pretty cool, uh, cool look to it. <clears throat> I think the taillights on this casting always leave a little, little to be desired. It is not the, the best, uh, taillight treatment that, that green light could do. Um, the front end looks okay. But it's a cool car. This, you know, big square-ish Caprice is a pretty neat car. There's a pretty cool light bar on it. Um, I don't know. Not the best release of this vehicle in the world, but it's all right. All right. Well, that's it. Thank you for watching.